I want to tell you about the Welcome Johnny and Jane Home Project. So many veterans, so many Americans know that veterans are suffering, but they think that they don't uh, have anything that they can do. They think that you have to be a trained therapist in order to be of any help. Nothing could be further from the truth. There's much that every civilian can do, and you can help in even just a couple of hours, so let me explain. Too many veterans suffer in isolation because we are a war illiterate nation. 93% of Americans have never served in the military, never mind being in a war. And so the vast majority of us have absolutely no idea what veterans go through. Many vets are afraid to tell us because they're afraid either that we will say or think that they're mentally ill, because they're afraid of upsetting us by telling us what they've been through, or because what if they tell us and we judge or we just don't understand? So I created the Welcome Johnny and Jane Home Project to help them to heal by having a civilian who's not a therapist listen with compassion and without judgment to their experiences at war and since returning home. The project is as simple as that. A recent Harvard study showed that veterans find listening sessions extremely helpful and healing and that's consistent with a wealth of research about the effects of simple, caring human connections. We used to call it friendship. We used to call it human connection. We also found that the civilian listeners were moved and changed profoundly by what they heard as they discovered the power of being able to help somebody heal and as they discovered commonalities between themselves and the vets, some of them expressed surprise. We had so much in common, which says a lot of civilians think if I'm a civilian and they're a vet, then there's absolutely nothing we have in common. Well, of course, what they learn about is their common humanity. And this work is in the tradition of cultures in which the community expects to take responsibility for helping people to heal from trauma and helping them come back into the community. In listening, we learn about common kinds of grief, loss of innocence, fear, moral anguish that veterans experience. And we also learn about differences among them, including how what they went through at war and then coming home depends partly on what war they were in, on their sex, their race, their sexual orientation. In listening, we avoid the harm that comes from calling war trauma mental illness. Many in the military are encouraging us to avoid calling it mental illness. How shocking, how destructive it is to say that somebody who was devastated by being at war is therefore mentally ill, because what then would be a healthy response? <clears throat> if we simply label suffering veterans mentally ill and send them to the mental health system, rather than listening, then we add to the veterans' burden. We make them think that there is something wrong with them, rather than that they are deeply human. And we increase the chances that they'll be put on psychiatric drugs, which can help, but which the veterans to whom I have listened almost uniformly described as unhelpful or even dangerous to them, often precipitating suicide attempts. When we listen, it doesn't matter what our politics are or what the veterans' politics are. We learn more about the world, more about the 23 million veterans who inhabit our country, and more about ourselves. And we bring that greater understanding and humanity to our relationships with those we love. Listening transforms our lives as well as helping the veterans to heal. If everyone who watches this video will listen to one veteran's story, we can wipe out our war illiteracy. Each listening session creates in the wider community some understanding of veterans' experiences and thereby helps reduce the heartbreaking isolation in which many veterans live. Veterans who don't yet feel ready to tell their story in person are starting to go to the website I created partly for this purpose at when Johnny and Jane come marching weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. And there they can send me either anonymously or with their name attached, their story, a bit of their story, a poem, a thought. Another way to overcome veterans' um, uh, 
veterans' isolation and reduce the war illiteracy is to use the arts. Um, I've written three plays about veterans from very short to 90 minutes in length. And if you write to me through my website, I can send you information so that you can hold public readings or performances, can educate others, give veterans another place to have their experiences addressed and know that the community cares and perhaps use them to raise funds for other ways to help. And in closing, I want to uh, read you part of a poem by Vietnam veteran David E. Jones, whose uh, book of poetry is called A Soldier's Story, The Power of Words. In one of his poems, he's describing how it feels to be a veteran and have somebody who's not a veteran listen to your story. And it ends like this. Directions I do not provide. You only need a heart. And if you understand a vet, you've made a small, small start. Thank you.